Hello you guys! Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. My name is Hallie and I'm so happy that you're here. Since I first became a reader a month ago, like I've been waiting for that long, <laughs> since I got into reading as an adult, one of my most highly anticipated books has been Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. And today we're going to read not only Fourth Wing, but also Iron Flame. Hello you guys, it's future Hallie. Before we get any further into the video, I did just want to say, I actually didn't end up getting to the second book in this video. If you've never watched any of my videos before, I always try and be very honest and transparent about everything and to be completely honest i was having a couple of really bad mental health days before i started this video i just was like reading slower i didn't have as much time as i planned to read the two books and by the time that i finished the first book i would have honestly only been reading the second book not because i wanted to necessarily but i would have just been stressing to finish it so that i could finish this video and i just don't want books to become that to me if that makes sense like i just want to enjoy reading books i don't want it to be just me speeding through the book to get a video Video out if that makes sense. And I do plan on making a video about Iron Flame still. It's just not going to be in this video because it was just too much for me at this moment and I just wanted to be honest about that but you can still look forward to an Iron Flame video from me at some point it's just not in this video. I still hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay see you later. <laughs> I believe this series is supposed to be five books I think but right now there's only two. This one literally just came out like a week ago and I got the holiday edition of Fourth Wing. They both have black sprayed edges. Truly, I'm just, I'm living my best life with this one, honestly. I don't know what order I'm gonna put these out, but I'm planning on making a full spoiler reading vlog for this and then also a non-spoiler reading vlog. Since I'm reading them back to back, like the first and the second back to back, and this is like a highly anticipated read for me, I just wanna be able to say whatever I'm thinking whenever I'm thinking it. And I don't want you guys to have to be like skipping through the entire video if you have not read the book yet. So. I feel like it would just be better to have separate videos and I didn't want to only make a full spoiler vlog because that's happened to me where booktubers that I watch will read a book that I'm like really excited to hear their opinions on but they only make a full spoiler video about it and then I can't watch it and it's just depressing. So I'm gonna try and accommodate everybody here. Go check if it's up. If it's not, it will be up soon and then, you know, everyone will be happy. Yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. That's it. I'm gonna quit rambling and literally start reading. It is 6.44 right now. I might just binge this whole book because, well, depending on how it goes, okay? I've never read a fantasy before. Okay, technically, I know people are gonna come for me because I read Harry Potter and that's technically a fantasy, but in my brain, I don't compute that as a fantasy. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because one, it was literally a children's book and two, like I've seen the whole series. So it didn't feel like getting into fantasy for the first time because it didn't, I don't know, like this feels like my first real fantasy world book. So I'm equating this to my first step into the fantasy world and I'm so excited to get into it. Everyone says that this is a quick read. Well, like it's easy to read, but I am a little bit worried about if there's like words that I don't understand and if there's world building and politics, like I don't know how easily I'll understand that and if that will be kind of hard for me to grasp and remember. So I don't know if this will be a quick read or if it will take me longer to get through. So if I'm flying through it, I might literally just stay up and binge it because I am just in the mood to read. Honestly, I was going to start this vlog like four days ago, but then I um, was just like struggling with my mental health. So I just took a few days to literally do nothing and like not force myself to be productive and just like letting myself feel my feelings. So now coming out of that and like starting to feel better, I literally just want to read. Like I just want to lose myself in a world <laughs> right now. And I feel like there is no place better to lose myself than in the world of fourth wing right now. It is the middle of November. It's like a week before Thanksgiving. I just feel like this is the coziest, best time to read this. It's starting to cool down in Arizona. I live in the desert so like it doesn't really get that cold but it's starting to cool down a little bit i think it's like hitting the 60s or something at night let's see oh my god stop it's supposed to rain today if you don't live in arizona you don't understand it never rains here like hardly ever this monsoon season it has literally rained like one time i think this could not be any more perfect. It's supposed to rain the night that I'm starting fourth wing and I'm talking about cozy fall vibes. Are you kidding me? This just made everything 10 times better. I am in the best mood. I'm gonna open up my window right now so that I can see and hear the rain when it does start raining. This is the best. So anyway, I'm gonna start reading and then we'll get into it. Whenever I have something to say, I'll just let you guys know. Okay, let's get into it.
Okay, well, excuse me. I've only made it to chap me every time that I update for the first time. I made it through chapter one and I'm already obsessed, okay? I'm already obsessed. I have been taking notes because I just, first of all, all the names are so hard for me to remember. Like in real life, it's already hard for me to remember names. So I've been writing characters down, my first impressions of them, their names, you know, all that stuff so I can like remember. And you guys, this is insane. First of all, I cannot believe how connected to the characters I already feel after just one chapter because I feel like I've said it in my other vlogs It usually takes me more around like a hundred pages I feel like I mean every book is different But I feel like typically around a hundred pages in is whenever I finally start feeling invested enough in the story to not be bored Or like I don't know like whenever the back story stops and like the real story starts and I'm just more invested But literally I finished chapter one and I'm like fully invested in this. This is so good So the first thing that I wrote is that I really really love the relationship between Violet Mira and her mom like I love how Mira is like so protective but then it shows her moments of like compassion and like love for Violet like I literally love that dynamic so much and I wrote down too that whenever Mira was helping Violet get ready for conscription day and like braiding her hair and like doing her rucksack and like giving her new boots and everything it literally gave me vibes of in the Hunger Games whenever Katniss was getting Grimm ready for the reaping and she was braiding her hair literally like the same thing and telling her it's gonna be okay da, 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 da. except in this book it is like a little bit different because she knows for sure she's going she's like you got this you are strong well i'm not saying you're strong but she basically is just like you got this like just don't die you know which i loved that so much and i really loved the mom like you can tell that she loves both mira and violet but she doesn't show it like there was literally like one part where she kind of showed a hint of compassion like two percent but that was enough for me to be like i love this family i don't know i just love the the dynamic of the three of them. I literally feel so invested in this and I finished one chapter. So the other thing that I wrote down is I didn't know that there was going to be like magic in this. Like I should have known because like dragons, like duh girl. But I really, really like the fact that there is a component of magic in this. All I know so far is that the dragon that you're bonded with, you can summon a magic power, like how the mom has the weather thing. But I don't know, I really love the fact that there's like magic incorporated into this. And I'm really excited to get farther into the book to see like how else magic is incorporated into the story. Like that is just so intriguing to me. So I'm really loving that so far. I also wrote down that I really like that the dragons seem like they're going to be more intelligent than just being an animal in the story that they ride. The fact that they will execute the people who were traitors and then deal out punishments to like other people. I find that really intriguing and I really like that they are more than just the animal that they ride on, if that makes sense. It's not like riding a horse into battle. They really respect the dragons more. I don't know. Does that make sense? Like I, I just like the fact that there's more to them and I'm really really excited for her to actually meet a dragon for the first time just so I can see how they interact with people. So I'm really, really excited to get to that. Also, I love the way that Violet is already like making friendships. Like her sister literally just told her like, don't make friends. And then she walks away and she's like, hey, you want to switch boots with me? <laughs> like, let's be besties. I loved that. But then at the end of chapter one, when what is his name even? That was so sad. Dylan, when he slipped... That was sad and that had me shook because how are you gonna get me that connected to a character in one chapter and then kill him off? Like, okay. So that had me pretty shook, not gonna lie. And then the last thing that I wrote down is at the end of the chapter, whenever you meet Zayden, I don't know if this is gonna be like enemies to lovers. Like, I don't know. Like, is there spice in this book? Is there? I know for sure there is a subplot of romance. I just don't know how heavy it is on the romance versus just being like a fantasy book. But I'm really excited to see if it ends up being like an enemies to lovers situation or if I'm literally just reading way too far into the first thing that I read about a boy. <laughs> so I don't know, but yeah. Those are my thoughts just from the first chapter. It's literally crazy how much I'm enjoying this already. And on Spotify, I put on fourth wing like ambiance. I don't know why it feels so fancy to say ambiance, but I put on fourth wing ambiance instead of a fourth wing playlist. Most of the time I listen to playlists of like actual songs, but somebody had mentioned in the comments that if they're having a really hard time focusing, they will just put on like an ambiance playlist instead and it has no words. And I am loving that, at least for this book, because it's playing music that's kind of like, it reminds me of, um, what is that show? 
what is that other show? It's like about dragons. It's literally so good. Game of Thrones. So it's giving me like Game of Thrones vibes. And like, I feel like whenever I'm reading, I'm like, I mean, I say this in all my videos. I literally see it as a movie and then the music because it feels more like cinematic music than like music music, if that makes sense. So it's like the perfect background for my movie in my head. I don't know. It's just been amazing. So I can already tell I'm going to be obsessed with this. I just want to keep going. I think I'm going to go make some food and then get cozy in bed for a little bit. I do want to read for a while tonight. So if I get too cozy, I might like go out on the couch for a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to eat some food and continue reading and continue enjoying this story because it's so good so far. So good. I came out here because Mark fell asleep and he's snoring, but this is crazy. So I made it to chapter 13. It is 1.50 in the morning. This is so good. So obviously if you've read the book, you kind of know, but chapter 13 is right after her dragon, Taryn just chose her. Tell me why, tell me why I literally knew it. As soon as they mentioned that there was one other black dragon that hasn't, uh, what's it called? Hasn't, what is that called? It's not bound, hasn't connected, hasn't bonded, hello. Duh. As soon as I said earlier in the book that there was one other black dragon that hasn't bonded yet, in my mind I was like, ooh, it's hers. It's hers because she's the main character and she gets the bad dragon because she is that but, but it wasn't even only that. The fact that the golden dragon also was like, yeah, me too. Are you kidding me? That's so cool. That's literally so cool that she gets two. And now all the haters can literally <gasps> that was like just so satisfying. That was so satisfying. And I think it's so funny that the biggest, most deadly, rare dragon chose her and he's sarcastic. Like he's not even just big, mean, and scary. Like he's sarcastic and he saved her and he wants to keep her safe. Like when he said, you're not falling off and you're gonna trust me. I'm not letting you fall off. I love that. He already feels like a bestie, you know, besties for the resties. That just like made me so happy. The fact that he's like this big, mean, scary dragon that hasn't bonded in years. And it's the one that tried to save her brother. Like, are you kidding me? And he chose her because she was trying to save another dragon. And then that, that's just so perfect. It's so perfect and I knew, but I didn't know. And that's what I love in books. If you watched my thriller reading vlog, one of the reasons I really liked A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is this kind of random, but one of the reasons I really liked that is because even when I could guess what was gonna happen, it didn't happen the way that even I thought it would. And I love that so much because I am the type of person that's like always trying to guess what's gonna happen. And so I love when I either just can't guess what's gonna happen or when I do guess, there's still another little something thrown in there that I just did not see coming. I love that so much. And also the fact that, what is his name? Ugh, it's so hard for me to remember all these names. Zayden, okay. Why am I kind of shipping Violet and Zayden? Am I gonna finish this book and cringe at myself saying that? Or is that like a thing? But then at the same time, it's like, I really want her to get with, what's his face? Dane. Literally me writing in my phone that Dane is her childhood friend. So I don't forget his name because I literally for the life of me cannot remember people's names. It's like, but anyway, so I'm like kind of shipping her and Zayden, but then at the same time, it's like every time that she has little moments with Dane, I'm like, that's so cute. So I feel like it is going to develop further into like a little love triangle thing, which we love. I mean, all the classics have it. Think about Twilight. Think about... 
Hunger Games, you know? Am I gonna need to get a t-shirt made for which team I'm on? Don't tempt me, cause I'll do it. I can't believe that I'm only a third of the way through the book because I feel like the story has developed, like she's already done with school, right? What else is gonna happen in this book? Because I thought the whole thing was her going to dragon school. But now she has a dra she has two dragons. So like, what's gonna happen? And also, can we talk about the fact that her mom is so annoying? I mean, I don't know how she's gonna react because it hasn't shown yet and I have to stop reading now. But like, whenever she pointed out, oh, she just wants to know what dragon that I'm bonded with and she wants me to prove that I'm actually bonded with them. Like she doesn't even care if I'm hurt or anything. Like I was like, yeah, that is annoying. Actually, that's really annoying. Like, does she care? Anyway, what I was gonna say is I really, really love Rebecca Yaros's writing style. I feel like even though this is a fake world, it feels so real. And the fact that obviously I don't remember like all of the country names and you know, whatever, but it's like, you don't even need to remember that for it to feel real. Like I feel like I'm here. I just, I got butterflies when she was going through the little test thing and then she did the rope and I was like, ah. and like when the dragon started talking to her, I was like, ah. But like it had chosen me. I don't know. This is just so well written. It's so crazy how believable it is. I want to be in this world so bad. I want a dragon. I want a dragon. I would never survive through this. So like I want a dragon. I don't know. I'm just like thoroughly enjoying this. And honestly, I wish I could like rewind time so I could like keep reading right now. But it's like almost two in the morning. And I like Cody's gonna wake up at eight tomorrow, and then I'm gonna be so tired. So I'm just gonna stop for tonight and then literally as soon as I wake up tomorrow, I'm picking up this book and I'm reading it. Mark was able to get the audiobook for me on his Libby account. For some reason on my Libby account, I have not been able to even rent a single book because all the books that I look up, it says it's like three month wait, four month wait. But while Mark was at work the other day, he randomly like looked it up because he knew I was gonna be starting it soon and he rented it just in case I couldn't find it. So I signed into his and I was able to get the audiobook. So I might listen to that tomorrow so I can like get farther into the book while I'm doing things with the kids because I have some like cleaning and organizing and like boring things I need to do during the day tomorrow but I don't know I'm enjoying reading it so much so far that I'm like I don't know so far I feel like this is like a four and a half star rating for me i don't know see i'm like i'm going between four and a half and five stars honestly the way that this has like given me butterflies it's not like that giddy feeling that like my five star romances have given me but it's like it's the fact that i'm fully immersed in this world and it's so believable and i just love the way that it's written because it's so like realistic even though it's a fake magical world and like the banter between characters not even like flirty banter but just the relationships built between all the characters whether it's friendships or enemies or classmates or teachers or all that stuff is just like so believable and I don't understand how Rebecca Yaros can get me to care about a character so quickly because I'm not the type of person who cares quickly I feel like with book characters like I have to be I don't know like it usually just takes me time to care about the characters somehow some way Rebecca Yaros is getting me to care about these characters within like a couple pages thoroughly enjoying this so far. I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Okay. It has been a few hours. I went to grab food with my mom. If you hear crunching in the background, that's the kids eating french fries. <laughs> but I went to get lunch with my mom and while I was out, I checked the mailbox and I was so excited because I had two packages. One is from Waterstones, which if you don't know, that is a UK bookstore. So you can get like alternate covers for books. I actually didn't know about this website. And then someone in the comments of one of my videos suggested it to me and literally, I love you so much for that. So one of them is from Waterstones and then one of them is from Barnes and Nobles. So I'm so excited. I want to open those really quickly and then I did get one other package which I think is from my aunt <laughs> I wasn't expecting a package from her. I'm really interested to see what it is Why, Daddy, thank you. <gasps> Isn't that so cool? Yeah 
So I got the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Powerless. I'm so excited. I was literally gonna just buy the paperback version, but at the last second I saw that they had this in stock and I know it's the tiniest difference, but I just love the pink flowers on the front instead and the fact that it's hardcover. Very excited about that. Okay. Book packages are like the most satisfying to open. It's so cute. I've wanted to get Divine Rivals for the longest time and I was just gonna get the one from Barnes and Noble, but then they released the second cover and it's so pretty. And I was like, okay, if I'm gonna want that one, then I want the first one to match. So I ordered both of them. The second one hasn't come out yet, but I got the first one, cutie patootie. Now I really quickly wanna see what my aunt sent me. I have no idea what could be in here. So confused. It looks like maybe a blanket. Oh my god. Let me back up so you can see this. It says, I like to stay in bed and read books. It's too peopley outside. This is such a T. Layla thing. And it's like fuzzy on the inside. This is such a like thoughtful gift. I need to call her. And she's in a library. That is so cute. Thank you so much. What a good little unboxing. Okay, well, I am going to eat some food real quick. And then I'm thinking- Wait, I'm mommy. Yes, with you. And then I'm thinking that I'm going to just finish the book on audiobook, or I might just get to like where I have like two or three chapters left because I really need to clean. So I might just get to where I have like two or three chapters left on the audiobook and then finish the book in physical form. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. What a great day. It's been like rainy and cloudy today. <laughs> this is the best day ever. Okay. See you guys in a little bit. Hello, you guys. It is much, much later now. I ended up having a pretty busy day. I listened to a lot of the audiobook today. I was really enjoying it. I'm like so glad that I decided to give audiobooks a try because I've been really, really liking them. 11.20 p.m. I ended up going out with my mom for a little bit earlier today. We went Christmas shopping and we had dinner together. So, you know, the night just kind of got away from me. I'm about, I would say three-fourths through the book and I finally reached the part where Violet and Zayden hooked up. That was everything I have been waiting for. Are you kidding me? I love Zayden. I love Zayden. And I'm so happy that Violet does not like Dane. He just got so annoying. He got so annoying. He was like just giving me ick. It was like, can you shut up? Can you shut up about it? So I'm so glad that she saw through that and was like, no. So one, slow burn. Two, Enemies to lovers. The thing about a slow burn is when you get there, it has to be perfect because you're like, I have waited 400 pages for y'all to get together worth every page. I love them. I literally love them. So that's where I got. Other than that, I'm really, really, really loving the dynamic of the dragons and the writers. Their relationship has deepened a lot since last night whenever they were first introduced. I really like the fact that their relationship doesn't seem super formal. Like you would think she's talking to a dragon like they're so scary. It would be a super serious thing, but the way that they talk back and forth with each other is so sarcastic and they're constantly like giving each other crap. I love the relationship between the dragon and the writers. Some other dragons, I guess, are more serious, but I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying, again, like the friendships between characters, Violet and her sister's relationship so much. All the relationships, honestly. But I'm really interested to see what else is going to happen in the plot because I'm, I believe that this book ends on a cliffhanger. So I'm really interested to see what's going to go down. It's already 11.35. It's been raining all day and like that's been perfect. This has been such a good day. Such a vibe. But it's still raining outside so I want to finish this even though it's late. I want to finish it and then I might start Iron Flame tonight. I don't know. But for now, I am going to finish the book and then I will check in with you guys for my final thoughts.
next day. My chair is spinning by itself, look at it. I'm not even doing that, that's so funny. Anyway, <laughs> it's the next day. I actually got ready today. Such a good feeling. I feel like I'd never get ready. I mean, I guess I was ready in the beginning of this video, but like that's only because I had bought new makeup that day and so I wanted to try it out, you know? And I haven't gotten ready since then, but I got ready today. Anyway, I, I don't know what I'm on today, but I just have all of the energy. It's probably because I actually slept. I got to sleep in this morning, which was so nice. But I tried to finish the book last night and I just literally could not stay up any longer. I got so close and then I just simply couldn't make it. So here we are. I'm on page 449 and the book is 518 pages. So what does that mean? I have, it's 51 plus 18. Is that, is that right? right? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm so close to being done. So I really want to finish the book today. And <sighs> I know I probably said this in the beginning of the video now because now I know. I don't think I'm going to get to the second book in this video. I really, really wanted to. But the thing is, I was going to start this video three or four days earlier than I ended up starting it. That's just because I ended up having a couple bad mental health days. And so I just didn't get to reading and like making content like I had planned. And then last night I was like, if I just push myself, I can try and finish this book and then get up really early and start the second book and if I just read all day I can finish the second book and then I would have to edit through the night <laughs> to get the video out to you guys by Saturday and then I was just like listen don't do this to yourself this is not what reading is about I just had to remind myself I don't want to have to speed through a book just to get it out for a video like I want to why the lighting on this keeps changing because it's like partly cloudy and partly not and every five seconds apparently a cloud is going up in front of the sun so if I get really white and then not anymore over and over sorry but hi Bentley you want to come up here anyway so I was gonna do that last night and then I was like no don't do that to yourself that's not healthy and I don't want that to become my relationship with books like just reading it as fast as I can so that I can like make content about it like I just I want to actually enjoy the books and then make content about it because I enjoyed it and not the other way around <laughs> so that's how it is you know I'll see it as a positive and I get to make another video for you guys hopefully soon about the second book so would have been cool to have them both in one video I feel like I can have it all in one place but it'll still be fine. I'm gonna finish this book. I really am interested to see how it's gonna end because last night I ended off on page 448 and things were really like starting to take a turn. Honestly, it was like a really bad place to stop because I could feel that something cray cray was about to happen. So I'm really interested to see what's about to happen because I think that this is leading to a possible cliffhanger for the book to end on. <sighs> so I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen. Okay, let's <laughs> finish reading the book. five stars. It's five stars and it's such an easy five stars for me. Where do I even start? Okay, where do I even start? Oh my god, that 
last battle at the end of the book had me shaking in my boots. And this really is like a testament to Rebecca Yaros's writing because even though there was so much going on in the battle, like I didn't feel confused. I just felt like oh my god like so much is happening right now but it wasn't like confusing and i loved that so much because it's like a lot but it's easy to understand first off liam i was fighting off tears reading the scene when he freaking died i'm so sad that he's gone he was like bestie that was just so sad and the way that it was described like the connection between him and his dragon and like what one of them feels when the other one is dying like that is just so sad so that was very depressing but then the end <sighs> i don't even because here's the thing i went into the book knowing like okay people say that this ends in a way where you're like i need to read the second book so i was expecting you know like a cliffhanger you know whatever i'm literally on the last page and i'm like okay i guess maybe there's not a cliffhanger and people were just drama i read the last sentence and my jaw is on the floor her brother is alive and he's fighting with the enemy Oh my god, I literally finished the book and I just started giggling because what? I'm so happy that he's alive, but I need the tea. I need to know what is going on. Why is he alive? Does her sister know? Is her sister in on it? Does her mom know? Did he fake his death? What, whose idea was it? Like how I, is the dad, like what the, the dad, what did he have to do with it? I need all of the details because literally what? What? Now I want to start the second book, even though I literally already said that I'm not doing that. <sighs> what i don't know that was just crazy but overall i really enjoy rebecca yaros's writing like i said with the battle thing i love that it's not hard to follow like i feel like this is why a lot of people say if you're just getting into fantasy and you want something to start with you should start with fourth wing i definitely agree with that because even though the names of the places and it's like a fake world and all that stuff like that can be confusing it's not a confusing storyline or a confusing book to follow along with like i didn't ever really feel like i was lost i just felt like the world was really believable like i was in the story like I'm right there behind Violet on the dragon fighting with her I'm their girl which I'm so glad about because I was honestly a little bit nervous about not being able to follow along or understand things so I mean the fact that this lived up to my hype I really had hyped this up in my brain so much and the fact that it lived up to it is like a testament to her writing <sighs> Violet and Zayden <sighs> I love them and I just hope I mean I understand why she's mad at him <sighs> like I understand but then at the same time and like the last chapter being in his POV I'm like Violet he's telling the truth <laughs> like please forgive him but I understand I don't know I loved this I just want to know what's gonna happen like especially because when she woke up it said that the I don't know why I still can't remember her name but the gold dragon it said that she's like bigger now so I'm like one how much time has passed two obviously her mom saw that she never came home and like her mom knows the secrets so like do they think that they're all dead do they know that they are fighting with the enemies now or like what's going on with that i want to know that so bad <sighs> i don't know i just want to know more and honestly i'm thinking that i'm gonna have marky read this because i think that he would like it <sighs> five stars that's all i have for you guys in today's video i hope you guys enjoyed if you are not subscribed already make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss my video for iron flame or future content if you enjoyed this one you can also follow me on instagram and goodreads if you want real-time updates you can follow me on those places and i will see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>